Pranhao Dar, good afternoon. Um, I want to start by asking you how many of you have a Facebook account. Hands up. Congratulations. So like me, you're all uh, laboring in Mark Zuckerberg's data mines. Pa Facebook is now one of the most powerful companies in the world. 2.7 billion users across its services, including Facebook itself, Instagram, Facebook Messenger, and WhatsApp. A market capitalization, when I checked last week, of $500 billion. Users spending just under an hour a day on Facebook. The biggest media distribution platform in the world. Now wanting to move into financial services. It's a huge business. Why do people use it? They use it for perfectly good reasons. They use it because they want to connect with family and friends. And they stay on it, perhaps because there's a bit of a fear of missing out when, you're, when you've actually joined it. And its growth, of course, has happened because of something economists call network effects. Because one person's on it, another person joins, their network joins, it grows and grows, and more people become involved. So it grows exponentially. It's grown hugely in just 15 years. And of course, it provides instant publishing and instant feedback. But it's used also by small businesses, by civic groups, uh, and by social movements. There's a great company not so far from here in Keredigion, so known as Hyatt Denim. They make high-end jeans. They've brought redundant textile workers back into work. They use Facebook and Instagram for advertising. There are civic organizations. The Ron the Tunnel Society wants to make the Ron the Tunnel, the former disused railway tunnel, the longest cycling and walking tunnel route in Europe. They use Facebook to communicate between their members and to share media that's occurred so that people who want to support them across the world can do so. Uh, and they do. In 2010, Facebook enabled its platform to be translated, including its interfaces, and that's allowed different language communities to grow up. And we now have an online virtual Welsh language network across Facebook where people can use the interface through the medium of Welsh. And social movements such as the Arab Spring have developed on Facebook, while Ghanim, Google engineer, who was very much key to the, uh, to the activities in Egypt that led to the uh, revolution there in 2011, has said it all began on Facebook. And Facebook advertising, as small business owners will tell you, is targeted, it's accurate, and the analytics are very good. So there are plenty of benefits. Facebook pays for itself through advertising. Facebook targets based on the data that you are supplying. Uh, and just in 2018, Facebook made $55 billion from advertising. Your data enables Facebook to target ads to you. It uses your engagement, likes, shares, comments to decide how much of your friend's material it will share with you. Facebook claims it doesn't sell data, but the House of Commons Digital Committee, Select Committee decided earlier this year that actually it was bartering data and had bartered data over many years based on documents that were secured in a California court case. Facebook wants to keep your attention. It wants to keep you fixed on its site. And the design of Facebook is, it, it is made strictly to keep you engaged. Things that you might want to click on are more likely to be highlighted in a blue color. Things that they don't want you to click on are more likely to be highlighted in gray. The Norwegian Consumer Council has done the work on this. The like button is part of Facebook's attempt to keep your attention. There's no dislike button on Facebook. That would spoil the positivity that Facebook wants to inculcate and wants to keep you engaged. Psychologists and neuroscientists have analyzed the effect of Facebook engagement activity on the brain. They show that keeping engaged is part of an addictive process. Facebook's algorithms promote in content that is more outrageous, more extreme, 
and more polarizing. That used to be said just by researchers, but Mark Zuckerberg, the chief executive himself, admitted that last year. And likely engagement activity drives advertising costs down. One Facebook former advertising manager said he believed Donald Trump was able to buy advertising more cheaply on Facebook than Hillary Clinton because the Trump advertising was more provocative, likely to engage more, and therefore Facebook's algorithms would identify that it should be sold at a cheaper rate. And Facebook has shaped a media industry that has become increasingly dependent. We know that newspaper circulations have been in decline for some time. That's not just due to Facebook. We know that advertising revenues have been in decline for quite some time. That's not just due to Facebook. But Facebook isn't helping the media industry. When Facebook posts appear, whether they're original news media like the BBC or the Times or the New York Times, Historically, until recently, they've appeared without their own media branding. The same kind of branding is given to them as is given to fake news items. And Facebook has tried to persuade media organizations to go in certain directions that help Facebook. So, a few years ago, Facebook said the future was going to be video. Many magazines, many newspapers switched a lot of their investment to video and did away with straightforward reporting and reporters. Facebook and Google swallow the bulk of digital and particularly mobile advertising. But Facebook's advertising metrics, as the industry call them, are not independently checked. They've been significantly revised regularly. And recently, Facebook had to settle a court case in, again in the States for $40 million. The case was brought. Facebook said it was an unfair case, but the case was brought on the basis that the metrics did not apply. They were not accurate. I'm giving a short list here of the ways in which Facebook is undermining democracy and human rights around the world. Facebook carries and has carried material from white supremacists, white nationalists, fascist groups. Facebook um, has been implicated in a range of human rights abuses, implicated in genocide in Myanmar, where the Rohingya people were exploited uh, and targeted uh, by the military. It led to mass, uh, mass departures, it led to expulsions, it led to people being killed. Facebook has admitted it didn't do enough in time to stop this happening. At the time, Facebook only employed a handful of Burmese speakers. So it didn't know what was actually being posted on its own sites. Um, the, um, all of these things are happening, and these are just a summary. Robert Mueller, in his indictment against the Russian Internet Research Agency, specifically cited Facebook, and you can see that on screen, Facebook and Instagram accounts. And we know that the Christchurch terrorist earlier this year live streamed his terrorist activities on Facebook. Facebook has become a platform that has been exploited by criminals, by terrorists, and by unsavory actors throughout the world. And now Facebook wants to encrypt a large number uh, of its services, which may make criminal activity even easier. Over time, it's been proven Facebook cannot be trusted. Data abuses, data leakages are now regular events. Facebook was recently fined $5 billion by the Federal Trade Commission. There are about a dozen cases pending in Europe, likely to be resolved by the end of this year. Data leakages are in Facebook's DNA. They go right back to the start of Facebook. Facebook makes promises, then retreats from them. It's made promises to clean up political advertising. But only in the last few weeks, Mark Zuckerberg has confirmed that politicians will be able to lie in political adver advertising on Facebook. It's used legal settlements to close down problems. And that happens regularly. Facebook has the financial resources to go into court and to challenge, uh, challenge cases that are brought against it and to string them out and to make those happen over time. 
it's given less than truthful answers to legislative committees. The House of Commons Digital Select Committee found that two Facebook executives uh, had either told untruths before that committee or they had clearly not been properly briefed by Facebook on the, uh, on the activities to which they were being held to account. Facebook, in the words of the head of consumer enforcement at the Federal Data Trade Commission in the United States, is a serial offender. And we know that profitability is all. Facebook, if it was shown in the Channel 4 investigative documentary on Facebook's moderation teams in Dublin last year. The uh, founder of the English Defence League, uh, Stephen Yaxley Lennon, who prefers the pseudonym Tommy Robinson, his Facebook page had breached Facebook rules on several occasions. But because of the number of followers he had, the advertising that was being generated against him, his accounts, of course, Facebook, to take that page down, Facebook moderators had to refer right up, and it took years for Tommy Robinson's page to come down. Some people suggest that maybe we should all boycott Facebook, and that would have an impact on it. The reality is the number of daily users are rising rapidly across the world. So boycotts are unlikely to be successful. And to regulate Facebook, we have to understand it. It's a completely new kind of entity. It combines a social network, it combines the facilities of an advertising agency, it combines the facilities of a media buying platform. It is vertically integrated in the way that it develops a number of congruent services. That makes it very powerful indeed. And of course, it is able to share data across Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram and Messenger, allowing advertisers to target across these platforms. This makes it incredibly powerful. There are a number of proposals now as to how Facebook might be regulated. In general terms, Facebook now proposes to integrate the data across uh, the back end of its apps, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Messenger. Regulators in Europe are looking at whether that or not that should be allowed. It has a unique ownership structure. Despite the fact that it's a public company, uh, Mark Zuckerberg retains a controlling interest. But when it comes to regulations being placed on Facebook, there are no personal obligations that have been paced, placed on him, though that was discussed recently by the Federal Trade Commission. Some people suggest you should break up Facebook, separate Facebook, separate WhatsApp, separate Instagram, separate, in, uh, separate Facebook Messenger. That could be done. But you could also break up the business segments. You could also perhaps separate Facebook's social network from its advertising exchange. That would have, in other words, do not let it sell its own advertising. That would have a significant effect. We could also look at restricting data ownership by companies, particularly by platforms. We could restrict the range of markets that Facebook is able to enter. And we could regulate Facebook as the new kind of entity it is, an information utility with strict obligations that ensure that it has to seek approval before introducing new services. But we also need to toughen the legislation on advertising online. We need to tougher, toughen electoral advertising rules and rules on the use of money for politics. We need to impose serious sanctions for the hosting of illegal material. Uh, and make the online polluter pay, in other words. And Christchurch has taught us that perhaps live streaming needs to be restricted. Facebook now wants to move into finance. It wants to develop a new financial service called Libra. And the governor of the Bank of England has been looking at this in detail. And it's very interesting. The governor of the Bank of England has said uh, that so social media developed uh, to have billions of users without the rules being planned in advance. But central banks won't let that happen to finance. They want strict rules in advance before Facebook is allowed anywhere near uh, a electron an electronic payments system. So central bankers won't let Facebook break the financial system. 
and we shouldn't let Facebook break our democracy. What can you do? As individuals, there are a number of things you can do. You can check your own privacy controls. This may lead you to discover some interesting things. Facebook thought I might want advertising targeted at me about hair products, <laughs> even though I am somewhat follically challenged. <laughs> you can take care about what you share. You can check the policies of Facebook groups that you join. You can find out who is tracking you with Facebook advertising. You can talk to politicians. You can ad address questions to your members of parliament to ask them. What are they doing to control Facebook's dominance? And you can explain, explain to friends and family just how Facebook works. The question I think we have to answer is should we move fast and break up Facebook? Thank you for listening.